Okay. You know, if you take this case in point, these events you know, unfolded over four or five days and you've got the challenge of compression. Actually, that was the, actually the central challenge that we faced. How to compress these events and stay true to the fundamentals. But, but I, think, I think we did. I think the fundamentals of what happened um, are there on screen. So what was your experience like on this call? This is your first film, and you just said that you were going to make another. <laughs> um, but what was it like to, to play this character? Um, first of all, thank you for having me here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the experience was, uh, it was just really interesting, you know, in the first, and just the whole crew just made it real easy for me, all the guys, and, you know, it was challenging at first, but, you know, we just we'll do whatever we can to get it out, you know, as true to, you know, content and to the story, and it came out nice. <laughs> well, Tom, for you, I would imagine you spent a lot of time with Captain Phillips. You know, uh, uh, I did. I, I read his, his book uh, pr actually prior to reading the screenplay, and I did get together with him uh, on two occasions and, and explain to him, you know, I will say things you never said, and it will be places you never were, but if we do this right, thematically, we will be spot on with the uh, with uh, the, the nature of what happened to him uh, and how. Uh, it's a very environmental movie. I mean, shooting it as we did on board, more or less an identical ship to the, to the Alabama uh, uh, at sea and or in very, this is very small confines. Um, so I think the, 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 the task in folding ourselves into, uh, into, into uh, Paul's good hands is always to um, be true to the motivations of everybody that, is, that are involved. Uh, when you, for the sake of storytelling, you start playing, um, you start manufacturing moments that truly were not part of the, of the five or six days. Well, then I think you can get into trouble there. And I, we, I could probably walk you through this and say, okay, that's a moment that didn't happen exactly as it, but thematically, it, it, it is what happened. Um, and that, it is, that's tricky and it can, can get away from you, but we were always um, uh, searching for that combination of procedure and behavior that are, were going to be uh, not just reminiscent, but very reflective of what really happened. And that's, that's tough when you're telling nonfiction entertainment. I think one example, actually, uh, 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 Tom, you face challenges, you have to make choices. And you're, you're weighing the necessary uh, responsibility towards reality and authenticity, and of course the, the need to you know create a, 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 a you know a compressed drama over two hours. But one of the issues in this film, for sure, was that of course uh, Richard Phillips was in command of a crew of some 25 uh, men who also went through this experience. I mean, obviously, Richard Phillips is, was the, the worst because he was taken off the ship and, you know, and, and, and in the lifeboat. But what we tried to convey was not to forget the crew and the role that they played, both each as individuals and also, you know, the leading role that, that uh, you know, a, a number of those crew members played in the unfolding the events and, and I think that one of the things I'm most proud of this film is that you sense that crew moving together as one, different individuals playing different parts at different moments. And you know, again, it's hard to follow 25 individual destinies in one film, you know, impossible in truth because of so much story in this to, to tell. But I think you definitely do get a sense overall of the role played by the, the, all the other crew members. Let's do some questions and I just want to say please wait for the microphone. Um, or just shout it out. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs>
We can hear you. Uh, yeah. Which is my uh, I'd like to begin by thanking the manufacturers of Xanax. Uh, this is like the most gripping movie I've seen probably in 10 years. Um, Tom, the last five minutes, how many times did you do that and how much of it is on the page and what you brought to it in terms of your reaction and sick bag? Uh, I'll, I'll tell the story. It's really... I, I think it's a moment like I've never had making films. It's not on the page at all. We uh, actually shot um, the screenplay out uh, <clears throat> towards uh, Phillips's perspective. I was never going to. Be, uh, it, it not, was not meant to be the last uh, scene of the film, and we had a scene that was sort of like what happened there, and it was okay. It kind of worked fine, and we were on schedule. But we had the actual captain of the Bainbridge. Um, with us when we were shooting, and uh, Paul said, uh, "Well, what, what did you what did you do with Phillips when you first got him on board?" And uh, the guy said, "Well, he was a mess. So we first thing he did, we took him to the infirmary to get him cleaned up." And Paul said, "Well, well, why don't we go have a look at the infirmary?" <laughs> um, we'd never been there. Um, it was not uh, it was not part of it. It wasn't on the schedule. It hadn't been scouted. It wasn't lit. But we went down there, and we had the actual crew of the uh, of the ship that we were shooting on, and Paul said, no, what would you do with someone who came in there? And they said, well, we'd lay him down here, we'd do this, this, and this. And uh, Paul said, well, shall we give it a try? And Barry said, well, give me, give me a couple of minutes to put up some lights, and we shot it, I, I don't know, four or five times, I guess. Uh, and really, what, what, to me, was extraordinary about it is Paul's willingness to see that as a possibility. Well, let's shoot it. Here we're here, let's give it a shot. There's a lot of motion pictures in which you don't have room in the schedule to do that, um, nor do you have the, uh, the, the sensibility to, to, to try and see what's cooking. But the other side of it too is we had the people on, the, literally the crew of the infirmary, they didn't know they were gonna be in a movie that day. Um, uh, and they thought they might be dress extras walking around in the background, and here they are, boom, the camera's gonna be on them. Um, and this goes back to that behavior and procedure aspect that, that I spoke about earlier. There is a procedure that you can be very confident in. And there is a behavior that if you're lucky, you can recreate. We did the first take, I remember, completely falling apart. Because these people had never been in a movie before. And they could not get past the horrible self-consciousness of everything that was going on around them. But we just stopped. Paul said, don't worry about it. You can't do anything wrong. It's not a test. But if it doesn't work, we won't use it. So let's just try it again and see what happens. And at that point, those people were really quite amazing, particularly the, the, uh, the woman. Uh, I, I don't know what rank she was, lieutenant, commander, the admiral of the fleet. I don't know what she was. <laughs> um, uh, but they just ran through what it is. And we did it five or six times. Um, and it, all you can say is that it worked. And, how long did that take, Paul? An hour? An hour and a half? About an hour. Left out, you've left out the, the most important bit, which is what you did. Well, yeah, I mean, I was loaded. I'll talk to I was loaded for bear, you know, I was ready to go. I had a lot of stuff in the background there. Uh, but just the freedom in order to give it a shot was so liberating, um, and their ability to, 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 everybody was up for it, so it, it really made itself. Interestingly, thinking about that scene, <clears throat> goes to the heart. I'm going to talk a little bit about Tom. Um, Empire. Yeah. It, acting is many things. Acting is playing lines, of course, but it's much more profound than that. Acting is truth telling and trying to find the truth in a human situation, which will be sketched out by a screenwriter with all the skill that a screenwriter can do. But in the end, that's just the map of the journey. The actor's job is to divine and embody the truth and find it. And that day was a very interesting case in point because we shot the scene upstairs, which was a sort of somewhat similar scene uh, um, because I think we both felt that there had to be this sort of cathartic moment for Philip, somewhere where you understood what it meant and what you felt of it. And you were saying a minute ago, it was, it was fine, it was perfectly okay. But I think we both knew it wasn't it. 
When we went down to the infirmary and we tried that first go and it all got, that barry got in the wrong place. You know, you're sort of trying to do it all in a rush and it doesn't quite work, but you could feel something. I remember we went outside and, and uh, I said, did you feel something there? And you said, yeah, yeah, I did. He said, it's just, it's just, everybody's being nice to me after 16 weeks of people putting guns in my face. It, it, no, and it, it, but what I mean is, what that is, and you see it with great actors, of which Tom obviously is one, where you see a door, there's just a tiny gap, the door is there, and it takes courage to walk through as an actor and find the truth. And that's what is there in, in that scene. It's the truth of vulnerability, of shock, of confusion, and all of the things that you would expect of an experience like that. But I think, when well, you've just seen it, whenever I see that scene, there's a shocking sense of humanity. Yeah. And that is an actor finding the truth. And that's what I mean. You, 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 you have to seize those moments. And Tom did, and that's yeah. 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 And I'd say the same for you know, there's a great challenge in this film, which is how do you present young men uh, who are intent on violence and mayhem, kidnap and piracy, you know? How do you present that in a way that's truthful? In other words, you don't sentimentalize what they're about. Uh, you are clear about its, uh, its moral, you know, essence, which is dark and dangerous, and yet find by degrees the humanity of that. So you get a portrait of complexity and humanity, and Barkhead did exactly the same. And, and when I will remember this film in years to come, I will think about these two men um, head to head in this intense psychological study at the heart of this film, and I think it's, it's they're both performances of great profundity and truthfulness, that's my view. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that uh, had me uh, working was this, uh, I don't have much sea legs, so I want to hear about <laughs> the idea of shooting you know, scenes in water, being in the water, uh, being trying to, you know, maintain your composure and play your role while also moving like that. I want to hear about what the problems were and, and uh, how you handled it. All of them, obviously. Well, Mark Cod was on that skiff for an awful long time out there. You know, they'll ask him, hey, how did you shoot those scenes? We're in the middle of the ocean in that speedboat. And they'll have to say, well, if they put us on a speedboat in the middle of an ocean. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it wasn't as easy as, you know, it looks on the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't even know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah. And you took the drone? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we did a lot of practice and, you know, it was, at times I would be seasick and, you know, it was, that little life boat is. It's not it don't smell like it, it's not there, there, was, there was one day where we actually getting shots in the lifeboat on the actual water in Malta, and everybody who was not an actor in the lifeboat ended up vomiting. Uh, first, the, first the focus puller disappeared, and then Barry disappeared. <laughs> Uh, Barry Ackroyd, and then, and then the, the sound mixer who was just in the back holding the book, he made a rush to it. And we got to just sit down and sort of close our eyes and pick around. And <laughs> those guys we actually have to work, it's terrible. Uh, actually, I've got to say, I was, I was on the camera boat right next door, and uh, I had a walkie a bit of talkie, and the message came through. We got a problem over here. And I said, oh, what's the problem? Uh, focus pull has just been sick all over Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a 